The Bhagavad Gita is a book of mankind's collected experience of and answers to life's most basic questions. Who I am? From where do I come? What is my purpose and destiny? And most practically, how do I find happiness? These podcasts originate in the lectures of Neil Bhatt, a disciple of Swami Chinmayananda. They are presented here in 20 to 30 minute segments, each covering three of the Gita's 701 verses. Welcome to Gita Wisdom for Daily Living. In the last two chapters, we have seen that Bhagavan said the self is immortal, eternal. And therefore the knowledge about the self is also eternal. I know that I, I exist, that I never have any doubt. But I still have no knowledge about that eternal self. I experience the permanency of the self but I have no knowledge about it. So the reason for that Bhagavan told us in last chapter is avrutam gnanam etena gnanino nityavairina. This knowledge is hidden, veiled by that from the wise person. The wise person is the one who knows the knowledge is the wise person. I always have this knowledge that I exist. Whether the world exists or not, I know that I exist. So that knowledge which is permanent in me is not available to me and therefore I consider myself to be mortal. So all my fears and all my sorrows are because of that fear of mortality. So Bhagavan said this knowledge you do not have to acquire from anywhere outside. Because knowledge is always there for you but it's right now veiled. Avrutam gnanam etena gnanino nitya vairina kama rupena kaunteya duspurena analaina cha. It is covered by your desire. He said, This is the veiling. The veiling is your own desire to enjoy this world of objects outside. But this knowledge you never have to acquire from anywhere else. Once you come to know yourself, the knowledge is always there. I exist. That knowledge nobody has to give me. It is my fear of mortality is to be removed. So once I remove that fear, then I will be fearless, immortal being. How can I remove this veiling, which is what we have seen in Karma Yoga? So once I right now, because your desire is to act in this world and then acquire happiness. You have to continue work in this world. Because activity is inevitable when you are embodied one. When you identify with this conditioning, we call it body, mind and intellect. As long as I am identified with it, I have to continue working in this world. And how I can work in this world so that I can Remove this ignorance about myself is the plan we have seen in last chapter, Karma Yoga. Karma Yoga is the method, Bhagavan said, you can prepare your subtle instrument, your internal instrument to gain your knowledge back about yourself. Knowledge is always there, it is just veiled. Once you remove the veiling, the knowledge will be available to you. And for that, you have to prepare your internal instrument mind and intellect to receive that knowledge. And that path we have said is Karma Yoga. And it laid out very simply. Bhagavan said all you have to do is act in this world but without any expectation for particular results. And then you establish yourself in yoga which is the balance of mind. They make your mind equanimous in all situations. So once you have acquired that equanimity of mind, then you will be able to act in this world very efficiently. That efficiency in action, Bhagavan said, is yoga. Once you act in this world with that balanced mind and without any expectation, that will give you knowledge of your own self. 
So, know thyself is the advice from Bhagavan. The philosophers in modern times or in history have basically come to the same conclusion. Greek philosopher Socrates said the same thing, know thyself, because unexamined life is not worth living. If you are not making that effort to know yourself, it's not the life worth living. But he said, you will find out that you are an immortal being. When he was about to be executed, one of his students asked him, where should we bury you? And he said, that is if you can catch me before I leave. Because when I leave this body, you won't be able to catch me. All you can do is bury my body. And that you can bury anywhere you want. So this idea of immortality of soul is fairly established by all thinkers and philosophers. And Bhagavan said the same thing in the first two chapters. They said the goal for you is to find out that immortal self that you are. And the plan for that is Karma Yoga. This is the goal and this is the path. But obviously we always have a doubt whether this is truly a method which is tried and true. So the chapter 4 starts with opening statement from Bhagavan. Sri Bhagavan Vacha Bhagavan said, Ivam vivasvate yogam proktavan aham avyayam vivasvan manave prahaha manuhu isvaku abravet This knowledge is nothing new. Bhagavan said, I did not invent any new method, no new theory. The knowledge is always there. All I did is reinterpret it for you. And this has been going on for ages, right from the beginning of the creation. This knowledge exists and it was given out to right people. So the first one, he said, I gave it to Vivaswan, Lord's son. So the theory here is the knowledge started with the creation. And in our world at least, the sun is the source of our existence, our life and everything that around us exists because the sun exists. It started all with the existence of the sun. If the consciousness is all pervading, then obviously consciousness was there when the sun was created. So this knowledge was existing right from the beginning and the right entity got this knowledge. They said first the sun got this knowledge. Then he gave it to Manu. So, sun is the beginning of our creation, at least as we know. Then Manu, as we know, is the lawgiver. He is considered the first leader. Then Iswaka was the first king in solar dynasty. So, this lineage of sun to Manu to Iswaku basically indicates the growth of the society from its creation to the current time. The Bhagavan said that this knowledge was given by the God himself, the consciousness, the all-pervading self itself, to the first entity. Then that gave it to the next right person, who was the leader of that society, that community. Then he gave it to the next person who became the leader of that society. The most interesting thing which we see here is the knowledge is given to all the kings the idea was that if the leader has the knowledge, then there is a chance that the society will get this knowledge. If the leader does not have this knowledge, the society will have no chance to get this knowledge. Yatha Raja, Tatha Praja. So the importance is given to the kings first in imparting this knowledge by the seers, then to other people. Because unless the top of the pyramid is is educated and enlightened, then only the rest of the people will know this knowledge. Socrates' student Plato came to the same conclusion. So Plato, after Socrates' death, was pretty disturbed. How can we create a just society? He pondered on that idea and came to the conclusion that there are only two ways you can create a just society. The one is, if the philosophers get the authority in governance, then we can create just society. And if that's not the case, then the people who are in the authority should be educated in philosophy. In other words, if the wisdom lies at the top of the government, then only the society can be just. 
So you can see in our culture, there has always been accepted that the kings have to be spiritually enlightened. And we can see in our history, and we have seen in chapter 2, Bhagwan himself said, Janak, etc., the kings have achieved this knowledge just by activity. By doing actions in a correct method, they have gained this knowledge. So we can see that in Rama's time, the kings had that knowledge. And then Dwapa's time, by the time Krishna came, this knowledge obviously was not readily available. So therefore, Bhagavan said, the yoga which I am going to teach had been there in our culture, was given out from one Rajasi, one king sage to another, and that's how the society had maintained this order. But over a period of time, it has been lost. Vivaswan Manave Praha Manu Iswakave Abravit. That was good. Sir, Evam Parampara Praptam Imam Rajarsayo Viduho. Sa Kale Neha Mahata Yogo Nastaha Parantapa. This knowledge handed down in regular succession from one royal sage to the another. Manu gave it to his son Iswaku, Iswaku gave it to his son, and it continued. But there's somewhere in that chain that knowledge was lost. There was not a right person to receive this knowledge, and then gradually this chain was broken. Sakale neha mahata yogo nastaha parantapa. O parantapa, this knowledge was lost because of time. As we know that any system, no matter how perfect it is, gets corrupted over a period of time. If you leave something alone, for a long period of time, it will get rusted, it will get polluted, it will lose its own character. So Bhagavan said, this yoga also, over the period of time, got lost. But this yoga is the eternal knowledge. Knowledge never gets lost, but it gets obscured by other veilings. If you remove this veiling, then obviously the knowledge will be available to us. So at our level, as an individual level, the knowledge of the self was there is there and will remain there, but I can find it right now because it is veiled by my ignorance. Also, in the society, this knowledge of how to run a just society is veiled by ignorance of the people who are in power, who are in authority. Sa evayam mayate adya yogaha proktaha puratana. Today, I'm going to tell you that knowledge this knowledge is lost over a period of time because of the lack of right person. There were no right people to receive this knowledge. Therefore, knowledge was not given. Knowledge was not available. Now that I found the right person in you, then I'm going to give you this knowledge today. Bhakto asime sakhacha iti rahasyam hi etad uttamam Because you are my friend and my devotee. So you have to find a right candidate with whom you have the right relationship. If that person is not willing to accept your knowledge, no matter how sincere you are in giving the knowledge, the knowledge will not be available to him. Neither if you don't like that person for some reason, or you have no relationship with that person, then also this knowledge will not be transferred from one to another. But here we have a right conditioning, Bhagavan said. You are my friend, I like you, and also you are my devotee, that you have trust in me, that you trust me. And therefore, I think the time has come that I give you this knowledge, which was lost over a period of time. So this is just an opening statement. Now, obviously, there's a lot to cover in this chapter. So I'll stop right here. If you find this podcast helpful, please support it by donating any amount by going to the episode's website at neilbutt.podbean.com or at chinmayarichmond.org. Thank you. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kaschid Dukkha Bhagbhavet Om Shanti
ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓ